আসসালামু আলাইকুম দর্শক সবাইকে স্বাগত জানাচ্ছি আমাদের আজকের বিশেষ একটি অনুষ্ঠানে এন ইভিনিং উইথ আনোয়ার চৌধুরী গত কয়েকদিন ধরে আপনারা এই অনুষ্ঠানের বিভিন্ন কার্যক্রম টেলিভিশনে দেখছেন এবং তারই ধারাবাহিকতায় আজকে আমরা আনোয়ার চৌধুরী যাকে নতুন করে পরিচয় করিয়ে দেওয়ার কিছু নেই যাকে আমরা চিনি যিনি ব্রিটিশ একজন রাষ্ট্রদূত ছিলেন বাংলাদেশের একজন হাই কমিশনার ছিলেন পরবর্তীতে পেরুতে অ্যাম্বাসেডার হিসেবে ব্রিটিশ গভর্নমেন্টের জন্য তিনি দায়িত্ব পালন করেছেন বর্তমানে তিনি আপনারা নিশ্চয়ই জানেন যে অত্যন্ত সম্মানজনক এবং ক্ষমতা ধার ধারী একটি অবস্থান ক্যামেন আইল্যান্ডসের গভর্নর হিসেবে বর্তমান সরকার তাকে নিয়োগ দিয়েছেন দর্শক মন্ডলী আজকে আমরা আনোয়ার চৌধুরীর সাথে কথা বলবো এবং তার সাথে কথা বলার জন্য আমরা স্টুডিওতে আমন্ত্রণ জানিয়েছি লন্ডন লন্ডনের বাইরে থেকে পঞ্চান্ন জন বিশেষ অতিথিকে যারা নতুন প্রজন্মের প্রতিনিধিত্ব করে যারা আনোয়ার চৌধুরীর কাছ থেকে জানার চেষ্টা করবেন আনোয়ার চৌধুরীর আজকে এই অবস্থানে আসার পেছনে কি কাজ করেছে কোন স্পৃহা কাজ করেছে এবং ভবিষ্যতে আনোয়ার চৌধুরী তার বর্তমান সফলতাকে কিভাবে কমিউনিটির মধ্যে ছড়িয়ে দিতে চান আনোয়ার চৌধুরী ওয়েলকাম টু দি সব থ্যাংক ইউ ফর হান ভেরি নাইস টু বি হিয়ার অ্যান্ড আই রিয়েলি ডি ওয়ান্ট থ্যাংক ইউ ফর অ্যারেঞ্জিং দিস রাদার ইউনিক ইভনিং as you say as a conversation with um many friends and some people who I have not met before but all um brilliant aspiring um young um british bangladeshis uh it is a conversation that i'm looking forward to uh, having for uh, so i wanted to thank you and channel s for producing this show and getting it together apnar kache je kono prashno korar age the first question anybody would ask yes um how was your journey in peru how was the journey in peru well that journey is still hasn't finished but it was like uh other experiences i've had uh, it was quite extraordinary it has been extraordinary uh i've served there now for three and a half years and um i think what i will take away is the the thing that combines us the thing that unites us as people as human beings together doesn't differ whether you are at one end of the planet or whether you are at the other end of the planet as you know as you said i was high commissioner british high commissioner to bangladesh peru is probably the most furthest away yes uh from from the point of bangladesh and the similarities i found the engagement we had the things we did together um will stay with me so it's been a fantastic three and a half years my family have really enjoyed it and i think i'm about to leave um uh, that country that great country where the peruvians say to us that we are now closer doshok mondoli apnara dekhchen an evening with anwar choudhury amra anwar choudhury er kach theke tar samprutik tini je ambassador chilen je deshtite british sarkarer pokkho theke peru amra je deshti ki chini peru name sei desher bot tar obhiggota amader sathe share korlen তিনি এর আগে আপনারা জানেন যে বাংলাদেশের হাই কমিশনার ছিলেন এছাড়াও তিনি ব্রিটিশ গভর্নমেন্টের বিভিন্ন গুরুত্বপূর্ণ দায়িত্ব পালন করেছেন তার জীবনের বর্তমান কার্যক্রম কার্যক্রম সম্পর্কে জানার জন্য এবং এর পেছনের আরও কিছু তথ্য জানার জন্য আমরা ছোট্ট একটি প্রতিবেদন তৈরি করেছি করেছি ছোট্ট একটি ডকুমেন্ট্রি তৈরি করেছি চলুন দেখে আসি সেই ছোট্ট ডকুমেন্ট্রি আনোয়ার চৌধুরী সুনামগঞ্জের জগন্নাথপুরের প্রভাকরপুর গ্রামে তার জন্ম ছোটবেলা থেকেই মেধাবী তকমা পাওয়া আনোয়ারের বেড়ে ওঠা গ্রামীণ পরিবেশে আর দশটা সাধারণ শিশুর মতো আনোয়ারের জীবনও ছিল দুরন্তপনায় ভরপুর কৈশোরের শুরুতেই পরিবারের সাথে যুক্তরাজ্যে আগমন সদ্য বিলেতে আসা আনোয়ারের কৈশোর ছিল পড়াশোনা আর দৈনন্দিন কাজে পরিবারকে সহযোগিতা করা তবে যে সময়টাতে ব্যবসায়ী অথবা জীবিকার কাজে মনোযোগী হওয়া স্বাভাবিক আনোয়ার চৌধুরী সেই সময়টাতে বেছে নেন ইলেকট্রিক্যাল ইঞ্জিনিয়ারিং নিয়ে পড়াশোনা চাকরি জীবনে সবাই যখন খোঁজে নিশ্চয়তা আত্মবিশ্বাসী আনোয়ার তখন যোগ দেন রয়্যাল এয়ারফোর্সের ইঞ্জিনিয়ারিং স্ট্র্যাটেজিস্ট হিসেবে সাফল্যের ধারাবাহিকতায় আনোয়ার দায়িত্ব পালন করেন ক্যাবিনেট অফিসের ডিরেক্টর সহ ব্রিটিশ সরকারের বিভিন্ন গুরুত্বপূর্ণ বিভাগে তবে আমাদের কমিউনিটি এবং সারা বিশ্বের বাঙালির কাছে তিনি আলোচনায় আসেন ব্রিটিশ সরকার যখন তাকে ব্রিটিশ হাই কমিশনার হিসেবে বাংলাদেশে নিয়োগ দেয় 
প্রত্যাশার চূড়ায় অবস্থা নিয়ে যখন আনোয়ার চৌধুরী ব্রিটিশ বাংলাদেশিদের সাফল্যের মাইল ফলক তখনই তাকে বাংলাদেশেই জঙ্গি সন্ত্রাসীরা আক্রান্ত করে কিন্তু জন্মভূমির প্রতি অগাধ আস্থা নিয়ে তিনি তার পুরো দায়িত্ব পালন করে বিলেতে এসে আরও প্রভাবশালী দায়িত্ব পালন করেন যার সর্বশেষ সংযোজন ছিল পেরুতে ব্রিটিশ অ্যাম্বাসেডার হিসাবে নিয়োগ তবে সবকিছু ছাপিয়ে তার সাফল্যের দিকটিকে আরও উজ্জ্বল করেছে কেইমেন আইল্যান্ডসের গভর্নর হিসেবে তার নিয়োগ পশ্চিম ক্যারিবীয় অঞ্চলের একটি ব্রিটিশ দ্বীপ কেইমেন আইল্যান্ডস অর্থনৈতিক কারণে গুরুত্বপূর্ণ হলেও পর্যটন স্থান হিসেবে পৃথিবীর আরেক ভূস্বর্গ বলা হয় এই আইল্যান্ডকে প্রায় দুইশো চৌষট্টি বর্গ কিলোমিটারের দ্বীপটিতে ষাট হাজার মানুষের বসবাস বিশ্বের সব বৃহৎ ফিনান্সিয়াল ইনস্টিটিউশন আর বাঘা বাঘা ব্যবসায়ীদের বসবাস এবং অবকাশস্থল হচ্ছে এই ছোট্ট দ্বীপ অর্থনৈতিক গুরুত্ব বিবেচনায় নিউ ইয়র্ক লন্ডন টোকিও এবং হংকংয়ের পরপরই ক্যাইমেন আইল্যান্ডসের অবস্থান বিশ্বের প্রভাবশালী অর্থনৈতিক এই দ্বীপের সবচেয়ে ক্ষমতাধর ব্যক্তি হিসেবে তার নিয়োগ আরেকবার আমাদেরকে করেছে উজ্জ্বল আনোয়ার চৌধুরী একটি নাম একটি ব্র্যান্ড এবং আমাদের গর্ব various responsibilities in the past especially yeah. as, as a diplomat yes i would be interested to know more about your responsibilities i mean you have you've mentioned that you have been appointed as high commissioner and then ambassador and now the governor yes uh, how, uh, what's the difference between high commissioner ambassador and now the governor what are the differences first of all high commissioner and ambassador is more or less the same thing uh, it is essentially the same thing as you know if it's a commonwealth country an ambassador from a commonwealth country or the envoy to another commonwealth country we call it high commissioner okay so the ambassador from canada to the uk here will be called the canadian high commissioner the british person to canada will be called the canadian high commissioner because they're part of the commonwealth so the 54 or so country in the commonwealth we call ourselves um, uh, high commissioner everybody else is called ambassador the governor role is is totally different to that in a sense is that you've been appointed by Her Majesty's government and the, the Queen uh, to be the Queen's representative uh, in this jurisdiction in the territory and your primary responsibility is good governance okay good governance for the territory in everything that this entails um, in the Cayman for example we have uh, parliamentary democracy um, there are 20 or so MPs there is a prime minister um, but my function uh, would be uh, like a proxy head of state um, representing the Queen um, and the and the government works very closely with the with the governor the prime minister uh, works very closely and so does the whole government there is a speaker it's just like a mini uh, mini House of Parliament with 20 MPs rather than 600 so many MPs. Uh, but the governor also has some direct responsibilities which is not delegated to the, um, the government. And, and that is uh, for, for defense, uh, good governance overall, for defense, for international relations, and for security. Those are held back. Um, but you can delegate those too uh, as specific responsibility of the, of the governor. Tell us about your childhood. This is, I think, <laughs> the interesting part. I mean, uh, well, it's increasingly a very Bangladesh. long time ago. <laughs> you born in Bangladesh? Did you remember? You born in Bangladesh? <laughs> yes, I do remember that bit. Um, uh, I'm you, not you that old you yet. Born in Bangladesh. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, um, childhood. Uh, how to um, how to wrap it all up? Uh, summarize it quickly. As you know, um, born in in Sunamganj, uh, a, a great place of water, of song, and great food and wonderful people. I'm sure you will agree. Yes. Um, so uh, I was born in uh, Sunam Gonj and, and then at the age of eight or so we, uh, we immigrated to uh, the UK. I had a wonderful time in, in Bangladesh as a child, walking on the river, um, you know, trying to catch birds and, and, and all that sort of things, playing how to do, do playing all those things that a Bangladeshi kid grows up with. I had a very traditional village, village kid 
upbringing you know went to school you know and then after that we did some arabic and then you know the the teacher came for the evening lessons and all of that and it was it was a sweet time uh, i have a brother who's close to my age so and and friends and 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 that's what we did you know and then we came to uk i was um, around 10 um, and and i grew up here as a as a british kid basically um up in Rochdale in near Manchester uh, and then in the east end of London uh, where we still have a huge community in Bethnal Green um uh, and then um, then we moved around and you know the rest of so you became a very well known household name in the british bangladeshi um, community after becoming the british high commissioner yes. to bangladesh yes so how did it happen i mean did you approach or it, it just came as I mean ongoing responsibility I don't know maybe yes. you will know that better than me <laughs> so I mean I mean for me I until that time I was in the British civil service I was director in the cabinet office um but with some of these jobs you know although they are very uh, I very mean did they come to you as a proposal do you want to go to Bangladesh as a British high commissioner No I chose to you chose to uh, I I absolutely uh, Uh, it was so was there any other countries to Yes kind of there were uh, there were others uh, okay. and others were offered Okay uh, and remember I was already director in the cabinet office I was doing a great job uh, I was enjoying it it was a great time um so being an ambassador in itself wasn't wasn't the wasn't what motivated me I wanted to do this specific job responsibility this no this specific Position. ambassador okay. where I wanted to serve two countries I loved and and so i i said to them it it is going to be have to be <laughs> dhaka <laughs> and then i i remember walking back from the um uh, the interview uh, stage and then kicking myself all the way back to the cabinet office thinking why on earth did i say no to everything else uh but it was just a natural reaction because that's what i wanted to do because it was you know one of these dream things that you have as a child i always wanted to serve in some way and and that was the ultimate expression for me at that particular at that particular time you were a target to be assassinated in yes, select an assassination attempt yes yes yes, yes. 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 i mean yes uh, and we know that the criminal um have now faced the justice system of bangladesh i mean yes. did that incident um change your perception perception about bangladesh no no it didn't at all um and as you know i i got hospitalized i was here for 6 week in um St Thomas's um so it, it obviously these things are quite traumatic uh and i i remember you know and even at that time the the foreign office were kind enough to say um would you consider going somewhere else as ambassador and i remember that question uh and uh and the and the reaction internally for me was was strong you know it says that would be a disaster that uh, would absolutely be a disaster for me as an individual of who I am um and so I said I insisted that I I go back and finish the job uh, that we started anything else wouldn't have been meaningful for me um uh, although the options uh, uh, options were there so that doesn't I, it didn't change my life in, in fact um it made me appreciate the the challenges that ordinary bangladeshi people and indeed people around the world face you know i survived three people died at that yes. incident and it you know um so it made you think and it made you think about what is it that you can do that you can add however small it is however small we can't change the world but we can change some small thing some small amount and for me that was this small amount that i i could make a small contribution and face this and show that we must act against it and defeat it and we mustn't let essentially terrorists and cowards you know drive us away from the values uh, that we believe so i remember i remember that but i think um, you know to, to your question does these things put you off no it actually makes you it you'll make i i suspect it will make 99% of people stronger uh, since 9/11 Yes, uh, the global diplomacy uh, is visibly kind of shifting um and there is a change of global diplomacy. Do you do you feel the change since 9/11 especially the western dip- diplomacy? As somebody once said, the only uh constant in the world is change. <laughs> um and so it's not is 
I don't think it's exactly right to say that it's now changing and it hadn't changed before. And perhaps it's changing a little bit faster. The challenges we face have always been um, violence, wars, uh, now terrorism, extremism coming from a certain angle. Um, uh, the other challenges for diplomacy is trade, building up good relationships, um, globalization. So all of that is still there as it always was. It is changing at a faster rate. Perhaps um, things don't look as set as they used to be. In the Cold War, there was a setting uh, for a long period of time where you had blocks and you could think about it in those ways. Things are, of course, now much more dynamic. And I think you have to be more agile about how you respond, more f understanding, more flexible, more listening, um, and essentially more engaging to, to, to manage that. Um, and it's not easy to see how um, uh, some of this will uh, quieten down very quickly. That's what makes the job so, uh, so fascinating, and, and that's why the time goes by so so quickly. You are right to say the world is, in some places, more dangerous uh, than it has been. Um, we are facing everything from climate change to the extremist violence um, to the shake-up of global institutions, as we are seeing um, um, uh, shake-up of the whole trade system. Uh, all of that. Uh, but that is this is the challenge for our next generation. Uh, to to take up. Coming back to our community, yes. um, are we failing to create 10 or maybe 20 Anwar Choudhury's in our community? No, what not do you at think? all. No, absolutely not because our, our community, look at our community now. You know, uh, uh, let's just go back for 15 years or 13 years when I was posted to Dhaka. At that time, it was, this is absolute because I remember talking about it. I said um, at a speech, if you go to any Bangladeshi family, you'll find one student at university. This was back in 2003 I'm talking about. Now I challenge you to go to a Bangladeshi and to find me families where all the kids are not at university or are, or are doing something. I, I, I don't, there may be, but it's now the exception. We have now got high court judges, mm -hmm. okay? Um, recently, Sarah Clark Chowdhury, I don't know if you've um, uh, heard about her, um, uh, uh, senior high court uh, judge. Um, we have other ambassadors. Um, the first two um, uh, British ambassadors who were not white were both of Bangladeshi origin, me and Asif Ahmed. Yes. Asif was ambassador to um, uh, to Philippines and now he's high commissioner too. Um, if you look at all the doctors that we have, uh, senior consultant, deans of medicine, you know, uh, my child, my baby, uh, uh, Emilia, just a week ago, was delivered by, I didn't know it at the time, he, he, he said it, by a very young uh, British Bangladeshi consultant who went to Cambridge to do his degree. He's 32, I think, consultant already at the age of 32. This is the sort of thing you see. We have politicians, um, God knows how many councillors we have across the country. We have engineers, business people, financial people, everywhere I look. I urge you as a media entity to bring these uh, people out and show what is happening. We, we have to go to a short break, but before yes. we go to the break, yes. uh, we've got some short questions. Some questions. quick fire? Yeah. Right. So the first question, uh, we have some images as well on screen for the audience to see. Oh, God. Um, Baul Abdul Karim or Michael Jackson? Uh, you know the answer to this. Uh, I think everybody in this audience who uh, will know the answer to it, it has to be Karim, of course. Uh, because, you know, uh, Karim I see as a poet. I think people see him as a singer, but he's actually a poet. If you read the stuff he's written, you'll understand what I'm, what I'm, what I'm saying. And he's a phenomenal poet of, of, of intensity, of, of knowledge and brilliance and a, a depth of soul that I have not see I've not come across. If you were appointed as High Commissioner or, or Ambassador, which yeah. country would you choose? Peru or Bangladesh? Oh, this is, this is what the Americans called uh, a question between a rock and a hard place, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, the, the, I think the answer to that is I have obviously chosen both. 
but uh, factually, you have to choose one. Uh, factually, I have chosen both. I think I would do them in the order that I did. Or you do a lot for the reasons I have. Or you said. do a lot for them. Uh, uh, yes, perhaps, but also, uh, you know, as people of Peru who may watch this, uh, they will know the sort of relationship we, we have. I haven't felt that difference. Okay, you just said, I mean, a while ago, that you were a normal kid uh, in your childhood. Right? Yes. So did you wear a lungi? I have worn a lungi, yes. Okay. Not as a kid. Okay. I actually wore it um, uh, not in Bangladesh, here in the UK. Mm -hmm. We did a fashion show. Okay. With long, this is going back sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, and actually it was the best scene in that fashion show. With, uh, did, did, you, did you ever play um, Hadudu wearing lungi? It's quite fun, you know? No, I was wearing, because I was only about eight. Okay. I was wearing not lungi, but, a, but pants. Short pants. Yes, I played Hadudu, yes. And I was, was alright, because I was a very skinny kid, so I could... Okay. <laughs> what would you play with your friends and family between Ludu? You know Ludu? Ludu, yes, yeah. I, I know Ludu. And Hadudu, which one do you play? With friends, how did you do, and Ludo with the family. So well, with friends, you'll play how to do? Yes, for sure. I, I love that game. I don't know why it's not a more popular game internationally. It is a great game. Yes. I think somebody ought to, please, somebody promote this game and make it into an international thing. I think uh, India plays it, Bangladesh plays it, and do Pakistan play it? I think in the subcontinent. I, in I don't in know if the, the Chinese play it. I, but it's, it's confined to that area. Area, yes. And it deserves to, to, to come out. Expansion, yeah. yeah. So in a household dominated by ladies, yes. who is your um, favorite between these three? Amani, <laughs> Ambi, yeah. and Amelia? Uh, this is the most unfairest question you, <laughs> can ask, you can ask a father. I am extremely lucky to, uh, to have three daughters and a, and a son. <laughs> um, so I'm surrounded by now four women, yes. my wife Momina plus my three daughters. And they all bring I think as a father, you notice it most. They bring different things to you. Amani has a, a tremendous, dry, wicked sense of humor. And I love talking to her. This is my eldest daughter. We have, we have great conversation. And she's at an age now where you can discuss things. Uh, Ambi is an extremely sweet, uh, very caring, very cuddly, uh, shows her emotions much more, very bright, uh, young girl who wants to be a rocket scientist and Emilia as I said uh, you know after 30 seconds she smiled <laughs> so uh, how can you choose between between those three but I think you're right I as I said my my whole uh, my whole conclusion is that I have been an extremely lucky man not just professionally but also uh, personally I think you're doing unfair with Mumina Bhabi what about her She's one of the most genuine people you'll meet. She's quite passionate. Um, she will say what she, uh, what she thinks. Um, she's deeply caring for people. Uh, but she's also uh, a person who, if she doesn't like something, will also say that too. Um, and she has many, many close friends. In, in Peru, for example, I think on her network, she has more sort of friends and people uh, than I do because they I mean just indigenous people. Yeah, yes, yes, okay. Peruvian people. Peruvian Pru people. Okay. And she doesn't speak Spanish very well, um, you know. And so that says something about the individual who can connect, uh, uh, who can connect like that. I think uh, when we were leaving, because she has now left and she's now here, um, and um, the number of parties they did in her honor. You know, it's just just amazing. You know, uh, I hope they will do the same for me, but <laughs> I'm not sure. Uh, so, you know, that's 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 my mean. And she's quiet. <coughs> as, as, as I'm not as sure that you have to go to a short break, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. As you all know, that Mumina Bhabi just gave a birth to a beautiful baby last week. So let's congratulate and give a big clap uh, to the newborn. <laughs> and with that note. Doshak Madhuri, I'm going to show you a little bit of 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 a